Good morning. Welcome to this uh, virtual contemporary worship service here at First United Methodist Church of Oak Ridge for September 6, 2020. Uh, My name is Chris Black and I'm one of the pastors here and I'm so glad that you have uh, decided to worship with us today. Um, It's great to, to feel your presence even though we are not in person here today. Uh, We are actually, if you didn't notice, our altar today looks a little bit different. We're actually going to have communion today, but virtually. Um, So I want to invite you now in this moment to pause the video, if you would like, um, to grab uh, a slice of bread or some bread from from your own cupboard and some juice if you have it. Uh, If you have wine, that's great. If you have grape juice, that's perfect. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, Just fill up maybe a glass of water or, or other juice that you like. Um, and and bring those back. So I want to invite you to, to pause the video now, and, and, and you can do that. Um, now, I want to invite us uh, to offer up our call to worship. And I want you to look for a moment. There's going to be a, a couple of verses on screen. And I want to invite you to, to say those where you are. Listen, the Lord calls out to us, offering life. Teach. Lead, turn us to Your ways, O God. Walk in the paths of God's commandments with delight. Teach, lead, turn us to Your ways, O God. With our whole heart, we will turn to You and live. Let us worship God.
we enter into our, our time of centering worship here for this morning, uh, I wanted to offer up some words uh, that Mother Teresa of Calcutta actually adopted and referred back to often in her own life. Um, I invite you to consider these words in light of the path that you find yourself on today. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. The fruit of service is peace. As we enter into this time for just a brief prayer, I want to invite you to be in prayer for holding your heart those who are on the front lines of battling this pandemic. Medical professionals, administrators, nurses, doctors, just all those folks who are seeking to help folks get well. Um, I hope you'll hold them in your mind and in, in your hearts. Let us pray together. From the beginning until now, loving God, we have turned away from You, following lesser ways, pursuing a lesser life than the life offered to us in Christ. Yet You will not abandon us. You call out, warning and wooing us to turn, to return to You. Even when we fall away from brothers and sisters in the church, You remain present with us. Help us to love as You love wholeheartedly until we are reconciled to You and to our neighbor. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we get into our time for a Scripture reading today, I want to invite you to turn to Psalm 119 in your own Bible and, and follow along with me beginning at verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of Your statutes, and I will observe it till the end. <laughs> Give me understanding that I may keep Your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of Your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to Your decrees, and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in Your ways. Confirm to Your servant Your promise, which is for those who fear You. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for Your ordinances are good. See, I have longed for Your precepts, and Your righteousness give me life. Well, for our sermon time today, I actually wanted to bring you down to my office on the bottom floor of the church, um, right next to our church library. And if you didn't know already, we have a tremendous uh, church library here at First Methodist. There is a vast array of really good uh, theology and, and Bible studies and, and some good fiction and a great children's section. Uh, but something that is unique about our, our library is we have a, 
a really vast collection of Bibles uh, and, and Bible commentaries. Bibles, I feel like, especially since they've begun being published many, many, many centuries ago, they're a lot like people in that they are incredibly different. Uh, each Bible that is published is incredibly different. Some, uh, they, all, they come in all shapes and sizes. Some uh, are different translations. Some are King James. Others are NIV or NRSV. Um, and some have just the straight text, and while others have commentary notes to help us understand what we're, we're reading. Um, some are really big, like this Bible, which I think came out of, uh, is our original pulpit Bible from our sanctuary. It is huge, and I don't know when it was published, but it has to be like 20 pounds. Um, other Bibles are works of art, um, like this one which has, I think, hand-drawn pen and ink uh, sections. This section right here is the opening of the Sermon on the Mount. And you can see it has really ornate and beautiful, uh, a beautiful border around the Scripture itself. It had to have been a labor of love if it was hand-drawn. And this one right here, we have this one, uh, which is like really tiny. Uh, it's like a pocketbook almost. It, and you can see the text itself is really small too. Um, if you compare it to our our old pulpit Bible, it's like tiny. Uh, Bibles are different and people are different and we're all unique in our own way. But one thing that is, is consistent um, for us as Christians is that we always... Um, center our worship life around Scripture and around the Bible. Every worship service we offer up, as, as Christians here in this church, we offer at least one Scripture reading. Uh, some of our services have multiple readings, a psalm reading, an Old Testament reading, and, and a gospel reading. Others, like our contemporary service, usually has just one or maybe two. It is central and, and core to our life as a, as a people, in how we uh, grow in our relationship with God. As we believe that the Bible is God's revelation to, to humanity, to us. Um, and so it remains central to who we are and into our worship. Um, what's really cool is that within our own Bible, uh, what is central is the book of Psalms. If you didn't know, the book of Psalms is right at the heart, right at the very center of our Bible. And our reading from just a few minutes ago, from Psalm 119, is at the very heart, right at the very center of the book of Psalms. Um, and I think that there's a reason behind that. Psalm 119, uh, and I would invite you to open it up with your own Bible or even, uh, even your Bible app you may have on your phone. And as you scroll through or flip through the pages, you'll notice that Psalm 119 is really long. It is one of the longest psalms, if not the longest psalm in our Bible. And it, it's a prayer uh, to God in celebration of God's law or Torah. It's, um, it's just centered around uh, the author's relationship to, to the law or to Scripture. Um, beautiful words that are offered up. Um, one verse, verse 25, it says, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. And another verse, Remember your word to your servant, in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my distress. It's your promise gives me life. And then, from our own reading just a few minutes ago. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. See, I have longed for your precepts, and your righteousness give me life. And then verse 35, lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Earlier, we offered up a, a path that um, was attributed to Mother Teresa. Um, and that was really intentional. I want you all to consider that path. 
um, the path of, of prayer and faith and love and service and, and eventually peace, but also the path that Scripture can help us stay on. Um, scripture is fundamental to who we are as Christians and a, and a love for it um, can, can keep us in a deeper relationship with God and help us understand how we're to live as disciples in the world as we interact with folks around us. Um, one time when, well, once when I was a chaplain at, during seminary, I was at Emory Hospital and um, I had the opportunity to meet a lady who had been in the hospital for, I think, over six weeks um, with a knee replacement. She had had a, a knee replacement, but it had gotten infected. And she had to stay a little longer than you normally would for a knee replacement. And she was just on the cusp of, of recovery. Now, I hadn't had an opportunity to meet her before uh, the day I walked into her room after she'd been in the hospital for like five weeks. Um, but we got to talking and, and she, you know, asked me what kind of a chaplain I was. I said I was a Christian chaplain. And she talked about her own faith, her own Christian faith. And she talked about how lonely she had been in the hospital. She said her children lived a state or two away and that they had been to visit, but they weren't with her every day. And she said it, it was that the loneliness of being here, not being able to move around much, just being in bed, um, was really tough. And she talked about how essential it was for her, for her mental health and for her spiritual health to be able to, to read scripture in the morning and, and in the evening, which is, was her practice. Uh, she, would, she would offer up and read scripture when she woke up and then before bed. And she said that kept her grounded. It kept her oriented toward God in her, in her frustration at being so lonely and her sadness and even in her joy as she was making um, strides in her in her uh, healing and improvement with her knee, she said, staying centered on Scripture helped me to stay centered on God and the ups and the downs to this whole process. She said it was an incredibly formative experience for her that she'll never forget. Um, and the reason why is was because of her uh, being grounded in Scripture during that trial. Um, many of us are going through trials of our own as we continue to weather the pandemic, as we um, stay at home and stay distant and stay even, you know, marking days that feel really similar. Um, I hope scripture has been a comfort for you, something that centered you. And if it's, if it hasn't been so far, I hope that you'll give it a chance. Um, maybe read a book of the Bible that you've never read before. Or if you are worried or feeling anxious about where to begin, with a Bible study or a, for a practice of reading scripture, uh, please reach out, let me know, and I'd be happy to, to talk, talk to you about that. Uh, to close our time, before we take communion together, I wanna offer up a quote from our own founder, John Wesley. He wrote this um, in his introduction to, to some of his sermons. Then he, he says, he writes, I want to know one thing the way to heaven, how to land safe on that happy shore. God himself has condescended to teach the way. For this very end, he came from heaven. He hath written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book. Let me be a man of one book. Here then I am, far from the busy ways of people. I sit down alone. Only God is here. In his presence, I open I read his book for this end to find the way to heaven. Is there a doubt concerning the meaning of what I read? Does anything appear dark or intricate? I lift up my heart to the Father of lights. Lord, is it not thy word? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Now then search after and consider parallel passages of Scripture, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. I meditate. With all, with all the attention and earnestness of which my mind is capable. If any doubt still remains, I consult those who are experienced in the things of God. And then the writings 
whereby being dead, they yet speak. And what I thus learn, that I teach. Wesley's words are a good ending for our time today. Amen. As we enter into this this great moment to have communion together, I want to invite you once again to pause the video, if you haven't done it already, to grab some bread from your cupboard or some some juice or even water would work uh, and bring those back here uh, to be with us and to have communion together. There's going to be a moment later on when uh, I'm going to invite you to, to take the bread with me and to also drink the juice with me. And any lines or words that you see on the screen, I invite you to say those with me. We are experiencing Holy Communion in a new way today. Though uh, physically separated from one another, we are still bound together as a family through our baptism. As members of the household of God, we now join together virtually, yet still present to one another as we gather from across our area, across our city and our, and our region. This presence is marked by our shared praises and prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's Word, and now our shared partaking in the sacrament. And now let us share in the great thanksgiving, this great prayer. And when you see again the words on your screen, I invite you uh, to say those out loud where you are. May the peace and presence of the Lord be with us as we lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. Creator God, You made us in Your image to love and to be loved. When we turned away and our love failed, Your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of Your only Son, Jesus Christ, You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave Himself up for us, He took bread and gave thanks to you. Broke the bread. Gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat. This is My body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. When the supper was over, He took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to His disciples and and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves wherever we are in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Lord God, pour out Your Holy Spirit on us gathered virtually and on these gifts of bread and drink before us. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. In this season of social distancing, may You remind us that we are never spiritually distant from You. By Your Spirit, Lord God, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and Your Holy Church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to take a piece of bread with me. This is Christ's body broken for each of us. Now, let us drink together from whatever cup you have before you. This is the blood of Christ shed for us. Now that we have received the sacrament together as one body, Join together virtually. Let us pray together. Day after day after day, you give yourself to us in two or three gathered in your name, in virtual connection across our area, and in bread and wine. 
as we go from this unique gathering around Your table, may we feel restored to Your body, companioned by Your people and sustained by the power of Your Spirit as we witness to Your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour I'm so glad that you decided and you made the choice to worship with us today. Uh, Before we go, I have a couple of announcements for us. Um, I want to invite you to check out our website at fumcor.org. We are having new content always that's put up there, uh, new 
new lessons and new devotions and things like that. So I would encourage you um, to check that out. Also, we are trying, uh, working to become a live stream church. That means being able to live stream our worship services live in the NPR and also in uh, the other sanctuary across the way. Uh, and that takes a little bit of, of funding. And so we're asking uh, gently to the congregation if you guys wouldn't mind to give to that fund. Um, that opportunity, more details about that are in um, this week's, or actually last week's first things. So I invite you to check that out. Also, we have a need for volunteers always for our community meal on Wednesday evenings uh, at 5.30. That's a drive through community meal that happens every week. If you are interested in that or, or interested in learning more details about that, I would invite you to contact Jenny Kaufman uh, in, in the office downstairs. And um, also, lastly, I want to encourage you to get ready. We are beginning plans for a Christmas shop experience here at uh, First United Methodist of Oak Ridge, but it's going to look a little bit different. We're actually going to have a couple of opportunities um, for folks around Thanksgiving time and at Christmas. Uh, there's a lot of details about that on our website, uh, but if you are wanting to contribute to that, now is the time to begin getting items for that. So um, check out details at fumcor.org. And now I want to invite you to receive the benediction. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever He may send you. May He guide you through the wilderness and protect you through this storm. May He bring you home rejoicing at the wonders He has shown you. May He bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.